All right, morning guys. Um, today's lab is on watt meters. It's lab 4-5. Purpose of this is to explore the connection of a watt meter uh, and compare its uh, readings in both AC and DC. Um, uh, it says the watt meters are used to measure the rate of energy utilization. Uh, this is important to an industrial application in such places as powerhouses where the load may, must be monitored. Um, as with any meter, a watt meter must be properly connected before it will give an accurate reading. This lab should also demonstrate the relationship between current voltage and power for a purely resistive load. So, <clears throat> as we've learned when it comes to connecting up a watt meter, there are polarities that are important to pay attention to in the potential coil and the current coil on each side. Not to mention we need to pay attention to the voltage ratings that they're asking us to put it into. So the lab calls for us to ensure that it is at a 10 amp rating, even though we're not going to come anywhere near that 10 amps. And it's also at the 200 volt range. Um, just because we're going to exceed the minimum, which is the 100 volts here. Uh, so we need to make sure that our potential coil has the ability to, to safely handle that 200, uh, up to 200 volts and up to uh, 10 amps in our current coil. All right, um, so what I've done is I've connected it up to the AC circuit right now. I've got a fluke uh, multimeter measuring current. I've got a fluke multimeter measuring the voltage potential across the, um, the cone heater up top there. Um, and then there's this watt meter here that is going to measure the actual power. So we can compare the voltage multiplied by the current to get a power and then we can also look at the watt meter reading here. Now also remember that the scale of the watt, watt meter is go, goes from 0 to 100. All right, So that's a percentage of whatever potential it's being put across. So in this case we've got 200 volts times 10 amps. So that's a total of 2,000 watts. So if it was sitting up here at the 100, okay, um, then that would be 2,000 watts it would be reading. If it was sitting at the 50% uh, level, it would be looking at a 1,000 watt output reading. This is the only meter that you actually have to do a, a power conversion and figure out what percentage it is, okay, in the analog state. All right, um, so I'm going to power this up. I'm also going to probably reposition the camera here so that we're just focusing more on uh, what's going on with the watt meter and these meters themselves. So just bear with me, we might be a little bit uh, jerky around here a bit. Okay, so I'll just uh, power up. So this is on the AC side, I've got AC uh, current in my uh, fluke multimeter. I've got AC volts over here. I'm sitting at 10, 12 volts right now. Let's dial that back. And our watt meter is zeroed out. Um, so the watt meter doesn't have an AC or a DC setting. Okay. Um, so now we're just going to fire this guy up. And they ask us to take it up to um, 100 volts in AC. We're going to turn that up. I'm just looking at the fluke meter over here. It's sitting at 83, 90, 101. So we'll go 100. So it's, we're at 100 volts and our AC ammeter is sitting at 4.7 amps. Okay, and if we focus in on the watt meter itself, pardon me. You can see that it is sitting at about the 24% range, somewhere around there. So 24% of 2,000. So if we did the quick math, uh, that's sitting at about 500 watts. Okay. And then they ask us to turn this back down. And the next thing is replace the cone heater with a 200 watt light bulb. So I'm going to power that off. I'm going to shift this over to a 200 watt light bulb. Which I've got right here. Pardon me.
Okay, and I'm just moving the jumpers over into the, the light bulb setting. And then they ask us to power it up again. We're still in AC. And they ask us to take it up to 120, which we're not going to get 120. In this case, we actually have 113. Okay. Uh, so we're at 113. Our AC ammeter is reading 1.6 amps. And the watt meter itself, as you can see, is sitting at the 10% range, or very near the 10%. So 10% of 2,000 is 200 watts. Okay. And that's that. So then they ask us to power that down again. Click that off. And then we're going to connect up the cone heater again, where we just were, except we're moving our sources over to the DC source, because we're going to compare both the AC and the DC. So I'm going to flip my uh, ammeter over into DC mode, flip my voltmeter to DC. Okay. And we are going to now power this guy back up again. And they ask us to take it up to 100 volts DC. Okay, so we're 100 volts DC. And we're sitting at the 25% range again. And my current here is 4.7 amps. Okay, uh, and once again, if we're looking at that 25% uh, of 2,000, that's about 500 watts. Okay, and then I believe they ask us to, uh, well that's it, they don't ask us to hook the light bulb up, but I'm sure the light bulb readings would be exactly the same. So let me just, you guys can see that, that meter, okay, as I uh, dial it down you can see the percentage sweep back down towards the zero. Okay, and I will power off and I will zoom back out here for a moment. Okay, so um, you can see just in doing that quick little lab there, uh, we connected up the watt meter. Uh, as long as I've got the polarities correct, uh, flipping them back and forth between AC and DC, the watt meter is pretty straightforward. The only, the, the biggest issue that students find when connecting up the watt meter is by um, getting opposing polarities in the coils. Uh, so forgetting to connect that asterisk to the same polarity. Um, and then once that's connected, uh, the AC and the DC values are exactly the same. Okay, so the watt meter is indifferent to it. These uh, fluke meters are gonna me measure an RMS which as we've learned in the sine wave uh, calculations, RMS is the same as DC, or the effective value of AC is the same as DC. So that's why this uh, watt meter is reading exactly the same for both. Okay, and uh, we'll discuss the results and conclusions of 4-5 in the Learning Hub. That's watt meters. <laughs>